Switzerland is a gigantic physics experiment often called the Big Bang Machine, though its proper name is the Large Hedron Collider. could answer some of the biggest mysteries in science. create the Big Bang and we'd all get sucked into this black hole. of wacky theories out there, harebrained <laughs> theories. Everyone's jumping and putting their own spin on it. Right. Because we're going to unravel the secret of the Big Bang, where it came from, what happened before creation, what happened before Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, what happened before Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. To find not just particles, we're going to try to prove a theory called string theory, which is what I do for a living. String theory exists in 10, 11 dimensional hyperspace and other dimensions. And it actually says that maybe our universe was created by the collision of two other universes. And maybe our universe is a bubble of some sort and there are other bubbles out there, other expanding and contracting bubbles. And what bubbles. would these other bubbles mean to you? These are other universes where perhaps there could be other laws of physics. I mean, this is huge. Really? This is greater than the Copernican Revolution when we realize that there are stars and, and, Holy and, cow. and galaxies uh, out there. We've been bringing you on for three years. You've never talked like this before. Well, this is what I do for a living. Some people think it's too hard to understand, but I think the average person can realize, hey, these are words you hear in Star Trek, right? Uh -huh. These are concepts you hear, but no one ever works on these things. That's why, that's what the Large Hadron Collider So you, you're in. putting this up there with Sir Isaac Newton and gravity. Mm -hmm. You're putting that up there with Thomas Edison and electromagnetism. That's right. You're putting that up there with Albert Einstein 
and E equals MC squared, which led to nuclear power. Right. That's what you're writing about today in the Wall Street Journal. That's it's right. That it's that significant? It's that big. We're talking about unifying all the forces of nature. There are four forces that make the world move. Each time a force was unraveled, it unleashed the Industrial Revolution, the Electric Revolution, and now the Nuclear Revolution. And now we have a super force, a super force that we're going to try to unravel, which created the universe. But, but, and now the Europeans are creating the new Vatican of physics. Physicists are leaving the United States to go to Geneva, Switzerland. And now the Europeans are creating the new Vatican of physics. And now the Europeans are creating the new Vatican of physics. Hey guys, today I'm taking you to the largest machine ever built by mankind, the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland. Tubes. The magnets in the LHC are 100,000 times more powerful than the gravitational pull of Earth. And CERN is the birthplace of the World Wide Web. Basically, the internet as we know it today. As my CERN t-shirt right here shows the blueprint of the internet. In 1989, under the guidance of Tim Berners-Lee, CERN began the World Wide Web project which led to the first web page in history on August 6, 1991. Scientists are concerned the LHC will suck the entire galaxy into a black hole or open a doorway to another dimension hopefully not the one we've seen in event horizon
Shiva the Destroyer, Abaddon the Destroyer, Apollo the Destroyer. They're all one and the same. Greeks most often associate Apollo's name with the Greek verb Apollemi, to destroy. In Revelation 9, 11, 9, verses 1 through 11, Abaddon is described as a personified star who falls to earth from heaven and is given the key to open the bottomless pit. Abaddon in Greek mythology and older mythologies is the human is the one who assists human spirits across the abyss. Does this make sense? Assists human spirits across the abyss. If you read up on the Kabbalah, the invisible realm is called Dioth, which also means knowledge. It is also known as the abyss. CERN's quest for knowledge to rip open a veil covering the fabric of existence to transverse other dimensions is nothing more than opening the abyss. Led none other by Shiva, aka Apollo, aka Abaddon. Everything God warned us about in the book of Revelation, word for word. There is no different than what there is no different than what tra transpired in the Garden of Eden when God instructed Adam. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. But what happened after that? Then here comes the serpent to Eve. And who, what is around Shiva's neck? A serpent. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God, God does know that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise. Genesis 3, 4 through 6. Any of this making any sense to y'all? The Tower of Babel was the pride of mankind, wanting to reach the heavens to be their own gods. It was unification of humankind, but in error. Because of their pride, which is a sin, and the same sin they called Lucifer, to rebel. Revelation 9:11 says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek name, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon, which is the destroyer. Shiva, Abaddon, Apollo, they're all the same. It and they're all CERN's guide leading the way to obtain knowledge of other worlds but in reality they're knocking on the door of another dimension known as the abyss known also as a bottomless pit all under the guise of searching for wisdom sound familiar <laughs>